I'm excited for today. Okay? And I need to make that clear because uh, I do, we are recording this because I know that what God's going to do today is help us navigate some different places. Okay? Some really interesting places. Because all of you have already started early this morning. <laughs> My, my wake-up picture was to uh, several of my friends were at uh, President Trump's send-off. Oh. And they were there waving and... and uh, oh, I saw a news feed. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, they were waving and he was waving back and at Andrews Air Force Base. And it was just a really, you know, <coughs> nice just moment for them to see that. And... Um, one of the ladies was mentioning to me, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but um, she said there were 17 flags on the platform. And so she started <laughs> just hearing what the Lord says. So I'll get that to you at the end. We'll do that at the end, what she said the 17th flags were. But this is why I'm so excited. Because the best I can tell, Holy Spirit is still speaking. Mm -hmm. The best I can tell, Jesus still did his finished work. And the best I can tell, Father still loves me. Amen. How about y'all? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is one of the most challenging times you're going to face because everything in the world looks like certain levels of evil one. Okay. And I want, I want to say this as, as, I'm trying to say these as nice as I can, okay, <laughs> so, about everything. <clears throat> we have a misunderstanding of God. We often think God thinks like we think. Okay. And so if we see right or we see wrong, we think that's really clear for God. Okay. Right and wrong. But what we also don't realize is sometimes our right may have pieces of wrong in it. Or sometimes our wrong may have pieces of right in it. Because the reality is a lie cannot truly exists totally if it has no element of truth in it. Now I'm going to say that again. A lie cannot exist and get continually propelled if it doesn't have an element of truth in it. Now that element may be 1%. You see? 99% may be lie. But that element of 1% will be what people hang on to. The bait. The bait. The hook. The thing. And it's, and it's, you know, it can't go on if it doesn't have that element of truth in it. So that's why the enemy is so very good at deceiving so many people. Is because they see the element of truth, but they miss all the other things that are attached to it. Okay, does that make sense? So it's like, I could give you, in the reverse of that, I could give you a glass of iced tea. 99% of that iced tea could be iced tea. But if 1% is arsenic, what will happen? That's your last glass. That is your last glass. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? So do you see how it works? You can have people that only see the 1%... And they see it as truth because they want to believe it's true. They don't want to do anything. So today we're going to talk about how do we navigate a place that God is definitely wanting us to go. He's definitely wanting to go. Most of us are going reluctantly because we like our cushy lives the way they are. But let me start here. Many, many, many prophets prophesied that it was God's will for Trump to be president in 2020. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, they heard, to the best of their ability, what they thought God was saying. Now, as of today, there will be another administration being brought in. So what does that say to us about our prophets and about us as a nation? Well, let me give you some food for thought. There are many that are already calling for the heads of the prophets. I say be very careful. Judge not lest you be judged. 
So I'm going to tell you that right now because I've already had several come to me to say that. And I said, you know, when God sent Jonah, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. Remember the story? Mm -hmm. He was refusing, did everything he could, got swallowed by the whale. I mean, you know, hello. My nose is a little bit better than just before I get swallowed by a whale. You get what I'm saying? I want to at least give in to him before I'm swallowed by a whale. <clears throat> I still, I just think of all the stuff he went through inside that whale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had to have been bleached. Totally, you know. Mm-hmm. It would be so gaggy. I can't even imagine. Okay. <clears throat> Swimming in stomach acid. You know, oh, well, you know, and you know, the whales have to be thinking, what did I do to God? I had to swallow this prophet, you know. <clears throat> but if you remember the story, it was God's will that he go to Nineveh. And what he was prophesying to them is God's going to kill you all. Right? Basically, I'm paraphrasing. But judgment's coming to you, destruction, da 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 right? But then the people, what did they do? They repented and asked for forgiveness, and God stopped his judgment, and even though his prophecy from Jonah was correct, because the people intervened, it now became a different uh, action. And now the outcome is Jonah's man. Well, mm-hmm. why'd you make me come here? I thought you were going to kill him. I thought you were going to kill him. Remember, he's pouting under the little twig mm-hmm. of a tree. Okay, so I want you to think of that. Hezekiah. Prophet goes in and says, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So is he hearing from God? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you're going to die. But then... After the prophet leaves, what does Hezekiah do? He rolls over and he repents and he turns. And the prophet is actually leaving, you know, the city. And it says he had, God told him, turn around and go back and tell him, I'll give you 15 years. Okay. Did the prophet hear both times? Yes. Do the prophet sit here and think, well, he didn't kill him. Does that mean my prophecy is wrong? Okay, so sometimes we get to thinking in our Greek ways and we don't realize what all God is doing. We don't see the full picture. We don't see the fullness. When, when the children of Israel wanted a king, God kept saying, are you sure? Because God knew where that was going to lead. He knew, do you remember how many bad kings there were in the Old Testament? Really horrible, horrible kings. There were good ones, but there were a lot of bad ones. So in Greek thinking, what you and I tend to do is if we hear God tell us to do something, we first assume he must be telling everybody to do this. Okay? So if God tells you, I need you to fight, 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 then in your mind, you're thinking he's telling everybody else to fight, 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 right? So you will tell everybody, and when they hear from God, you're supposed to rest. You're like, oh no, that's not what God said. God said we're supposed to fight. And yet this other one heard God very distinctly say, you're supposed to rest. Now what we tend to do in our Greek thinking is think, well, God's, not messed up and I must be right because of course I hear from him better than you do. So we don't realize God can be doing all the things at the same time. God can have this group fight, this group rest, this group fight, this group rest. Do you see what I'm saying? So what we tend to do is when we hear, we get so impassioned that we begin to say to everybody that's not hearing the way we hear, well, you must be wrong. Can you see this in the body of Christ? Can you see that? So in the body of Christ, what often happens is if they don't hear Holy Spirit tell them this specific thing, then they get real frustrated because all the rest of you guys seem to be doing the wrong thing. You're going in the wrong direction. You're doing what, okay. So the Hebraic, biblical way of thinking is, God is God. 
He can do all of them at the same time. Had you thought of that? Can God advance and stand still at the same time? It's not a trick question. <laughs> yes. yes. Very good. <laughs> but we are learning how to have the character of God. We are learning how to be in the space where God is. We're learning how to think like God. We're learning how to not be frustrated when we don't get our ways. There are a lot of teenage emotions going on today in America. Okay. A lot of two-year-old temper tantrum emotions going on today. And on both sides. So when we look at something like this, what we have to say is, were these prophets wrong? Well, in my, my heart, what God shared with me is that God's will was that he was president. But what happened is the body of Christ who's supposed to be bringing the government of God to our nation was not aware and capable of keeping the evil away. And because the evil can play on so many more dimensions than most body of Christ people even understand exist, the people spoke. Not the people that should be speaking, but the others. So I do believe it was a stolen election. I mean, I'll just say it. It's, it's, it was a stolen election. When God reveals that to the rest of America, I don't know. That's going to be a really big question. Because I heard yesterday that they were pressuring all these cable companies to take off all the righteous networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So what we want to do is realize what is our job? Okay. What is our really, really our job? Because we're in the midst of that same thing too. We're trying to navigate... Well, God, surely if you said for the prophets to do this, why didn't it happen? Why didn't you do something? Okay. Why didn't you blow the Red Sea up? <laughs> okay, really, are we not saying that? Mm -hmm. why, why didn't you fix this? Why didn't you change this? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? And he's going, hmm. Why didn't you? There you go. If my people. If my people. What we have got to understand is What's our assignment? And we got to stop thinking like these very nominal Christians think, okay? Because truthfully, if anything, it's God exposing not only the swamp that's in D.C., yeah. it's exposing the swamp that's in the church. Mm -hmm. And that is a greater danger than those little water moccasins and alligators. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? It truly is a greater danger because the swamp in the church believes they're right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they won't, they will just defend it. They'll do everything they can to do their actions. I've already had several invitations to come in as governmental church people to shut these prophets down. Are you hearing me? Wow. Mm -hmm. And I, I put my phone down so I wouldn't respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it was right in me like, oh, you are in more danger than you have any idea. Because this is, this is going to be a hard place for all of us to walk if we don't realize where we are in this big picture. I asked Selena to put this picture up because this is what you have to understand. This is what God has been trying and trying and trying to get us to understand, these are the modalities or the places where you fight in a war, okay? Now, I want you to either sketch it, get it in your head, do something, because this is what God was originally <clears throat> intending for us. In, um, oh, that's a good idea. Take a picture. I always do that at conferences. <clears throat> when... When God originally created us in the Garden of Eden, we were created as dimensional beings. Can everyone agree? It says we were created in the image and the likeness of God. If that is true, 
then Adam and Eve had access to the image and likenesses of God and the character of God and everything he was. Okay. Now, in this world that you and I live in right now, when people start defining dimensions, they often do it from a scientific standpoint or a spiritual standpoint. Most of the spiritual defining of dimensions has been in things like Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, martial arts, um, let me think, uh, humanism, uh, New Age. It's always been about your consciousness and your different fields and the planes you can ascend to and all these things from a spiritual standpoint, okay? <clears throat> what most Christians would not touch it. They would not touch it because they had seen the perversion of it. They had seen how Buddhist monks had perverted it. They had seen how um, Hindu and that theology. They had seen how they had gone into those dimensions and perverted it, so they labeled it evil. Are you hearing me? They labeled those dimensions evil. Now, I could come in and, and give you some scientific names for those diff different dimensions, but I prefer to go back to the original design. And the original design was not labeled scientific. The original design of God was labeled his name and his character. So if you will realize that all the dimensions of God are in relationship to each of his names, okay? So uh, we could choose Jehovah Rapha. What does that mean? Healer. He is our healer. So in the dimension of God is our healer, which we had in the Garden of Eden as original design, we had access to a dimension where we were never sick. Our body did not decay. Are you hearing me? So in that dimension in the Garden of Eden, we could, you know, Adam and Eve didn't have to go to a physician. They, they were. That dimension was right there with them. Everybody's getting this. So what happens is all of us today are not aware of those dimensions. We, we just don't think like that. We switch it to something where we classify it spiritual. God is the healer. That's a separate thing from God is healing inside of us. Or we can actually be in the dimension where healing is already there. If God is healing me, it means I'm not there. Right? Right. Right? I mean, I'm not there yet. He's healing me. But by faith, we say we are. Right? Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is move ourselves out of this land dimension mm -hmm. into somewhere, wherever that healing dimension is. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out how do we get there. And it is a war. It is a war to get rid of our thinking that's so bogged down into just one dimension into thinking, does God want our land healed? I think we can all agree on that. Not until probably about maybe 30 years ago did we even start hearing about people talking about healing the land. You know, it was something you used. It was something we abused, which is where we are today. All of our science, even in our agriculture situations, came to the point is, uh, I was talking to a guy that's a kingdom farmer. You're going to hear that term more and more coming up. And he was saying, you know, years and years ago in my grandpa's age, they brought in fertilizer, a chemical fertilizer that was not natural fertilizer because our land was getting so depleted. It wouldn't do what it needed to do. And he said, so they introduced a foreign substance and started the cycle. And he started telling about how hard it is when he goes onto the land. He says he has to do communion on the land to get the land forgiven from all the stuff that has been abused on the land. Wow. Do you realize that? All the seeds that have been planted that were not God's seeds. They were classified as hybrid seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
So what he's saying is, I want you to see this. What we have to understand is, can I be totally walking in a place called the dimension of divine health and walk in a cesspool every day? It's going to be a little bit more challenging, isn't it? I mean, hello. <laughs> if any, any of you pig farmers or anything like that out there. Okay, I mean, you know the first time I realized pigs would eat people? Yeah. That was a new day for me. Eye-opener, wasn't it? Wasn't it, though? It's like, you sweet little thing. Okay. Not, I sidetrack. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm just thinking of the cesspool and the mud and, the, and everything. It's okay. <laughs> but let's think about this. I'm going to let my babies go outside barefoot, of course, barefoot, and I'm going to let them just play in that cesspool in my front yard. I'm going to let them just roll in it. I'm going to let them just cover themselves in it. And then I'm going to say they're going to be healthy. See now, see how ridiculous that sounds? Yeah. But yet that what, that's what we're doing. Your land, as long, the land is not evil. The land did nothing to sin. But we humans created a sin and deposited it into the land. Over and over and over again. Broken covenants, innocent bloodshed, idolatry, immorality, we created cesspools in the land where the land's whole purpose is to praise God. And it can't because it's so weighed down with all this sin, all this junk, all this abuse. Do you realize the land is like an abused child? Over and over we abuse it and tell it to produce good things. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. So we have got to stop fighting wars in just a dimension, one dimension. We have got to understand that the enemy has been playing in all these dimensions the whole time. <clears throat> so in land, it's, that's where we start. We start with our house. We start with ourselves. Your house, your home should be a sanctuary. And I mean that in every sense of the word. The land should be cleaned. The house itself should be cleaned. The things you bring into the house should be cleaned. And if they can't be, they should be thrown away or burned. Yeah. Okay? Because that should be your sanctuary where it's so guarded and protected that the enemy cannot come in and touch you when you're in your sanctuary. Now, <clears throat> several people have done that, but they don't take it to the next step of saying, well, I think I'll just have my section line be sanctuary. I think I'll just have my city be a sanctuary. Hmm. Okay. Now that's a little harder because now we have more free will human beings in there, right? So somewhere in our mind, we've got this point that, well, if there's more people and everybody gets their free will, then they can choose to do something different. They can on one dimension. They can on the top, higher one. If we ever come into agreement with God that he says, here, I've given you the keys to Stillwater. I've given you the keys to Stillwater. The enemy has done overtime stuff here in Stillwater. Stillwater presents itself as this wonderful community. I Please, it is a good community, okay. A wonderful community that has your heart and your thoughts and your concern just for you because we're such nice people. Why am I hearing these little... Okay, because it isn't so. <laughs> okay, it's the billboard we place. But there is so much corruption, mm -hmm. would we agree? Yeah. There's so much deception that we all put on our Sunday best and take the photos. We all have these wonderful houses, but if they looked under the houses, they would see the swampland, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. So what where God's saying is, 
That's where we start fighting. That's where we start taking out the swamp there. That's where we start exposing it there. Because the enemy is playing in all these dimensions. In the history of, of the world, we fought first on land. It was territory. Then we started fighting on the sea. Okay. Now notice, we get new inventions, we start fighting in different dimensions. We didn't fight uh, in the sea until we kind of got boats. Right? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? We didn't fight in the air until we had airplanes. Everybody's getting this. What, what took off with space? We couldn't be up there. We didn't know how to be up there. We didn't know how to be in that spirit realm. Right? Selena, I know you're freezing, so go ahead and see if you can up it so that everybody will be fine. <coughs> the thermostat is not yet going where it's supposed to go, so we're playing with it. So in the air, we know we have airplanes, and we think of it like that. Now in space, we think in terms of, oh my goodness, I don't know if any of you have seen how much junk is in space mm -hmm. right now. I, I have these wonderful apps where I can actually hold my phone up. And they'll tell me where the satellites are, tell me where the stars are, the moon, and all these different things. And it'll tell you what all's out there. It's crazy. The pieces, parts, and chunks. All, all things that are, yeah, it's still up there. All right. And then there's one called cyberspace. Okay. Now, what we have got to understand is none of those were new to God. God had all of those dimensions in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Um, you see pieces of them throughout the whole scripture. When the enemy teleported Jesus from the ground up to the temple, how did he get there? There was no highway. You hear what I'm saying? He was already operating in all these places. So this is what the enemy has done to us. He's made us think, you're living on land, you're required, the only way you get to go into the water is through a boat, the only way that you get to go into air is through an airplane, the only way you get to go into space is with a you know, rocket, jet, whatever. The only way you get to go to cyberspace is through the internet. Hmm. What if he had been wanting you to be aware of each one of these places just like he's slowly done to us? I can't tell you how many land reconciliations we've done. I can't tell you, you remember the water reconciliation we did? I mean, just here recently, we did when the floods came to Oklahoma, we were rejoicing because God was sending the drops to us so we could redeem them, get the sin off of them so they could be sent to everywhere else and be blessing. What about the air? Do you realize that the air is, that the enemy works overtime to make your air polluted in a lot of different ways? Okay. And then blames your cows for the pollution? <laughs> that is still so amazing to me. I mean, how can you get from... <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm going to try to stay on target. <laughs> so... Cyberspace. <clears throat> Cyberspace is a form of communication that does not use your mouth. It does not use uh, things you can see. It uses frequencies. Okay? Frequencies. Interesting. You know, you are supposed to be a frequency generator. You are supposed to be the one that wherever you go, the sound of God is supposed to go first before you. And it's supposed to put everything around you into agreement with that sound. Now, why is it not? Why is it not? Well, first, most of us don't realize that's our job. We're just still doing our own little bubble. Okay. We're not taking back the kingdom. We're not saying, he gave me the keys to this. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So this is where we are. We're in a position right now in our United States where somewhere in our humanness we think everything is really going to be even more evil. Anybody agree? 
I mean, they don't see any other way it can't be more evil in the natural. But if we took our place, it's not we the people necessarily of America, it's we the people of God. Yes. If we took our place, nothing they could do would be allowed to happen. When we take control over cyberspace, which is how they stole your election, when you take authority over that, then they can't go past it. The reason they got to go past it this time is because there weren't enough people taking authority over what was happening. Because they didn't believe it was true. If you ask the regular person on, in the United States, do you really believe that Someone can from another country can come in and steal your election. What would they say? No, well, no, of course not. No way. Not in America. <laughs> but who is God trying to wake up? The church. Not the creatures in the swamp. They didn't want to be woke up. They didn't want to be exposed. They don't want to know. Now, you think that fight was hard? Because God did expose them all. I mean, there are a lot of them. I mean, he made it pretty clear. You can see big tech. Can you not? Yes. You can see all these are exposed now. Now what are we going to do with these creatures? You can't put them in the zoo. <laughs> see, I think that's what's so frustrating. It's like we pray and pray and pray for all the things done in the darkness to come to light. All this stuff has come to light and nobody's willing to do anything about it. Okay, that's, that's because the next job is ours. And we're, yeah. <laughs> we're leaderless. <laughs> we're leaderless. We're divided. We're deceived. So bringing us together in any kind of unity is a challenge. Is more than a challenge. Right? So I'm, I'm asking you this question. I believe that today your prayer life should have been bumped up to at least the 10th level. Yep. Okay. Not because, you know, we're, we're seeing that. It's because God's trying to say, I already gave you the victory. What is wrong with you people? So yes, just like in Jonah, the people that know how in Satan's realm to play in those dimensions got their will. Do you see? Prophecies came. This is what God wants. Mm -hmm. And the others got their will. Many of those others were your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. Now we can't kill them. I've already been, inst I've already been instructed by God that that's not my place. I even got extra ammo. I went like, hello. I'm teasing. But it would be so much easier in my mind, you know. It would just, let's just, and then God goes, but what if that's somebody you really love that's deceived? Well, maybe we could give them a day or two to repent. I don't know. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying? We've got to shift our thinking from we have lost. We have not lost. No. We won. Yes, yes we have. What now we must do is be a different kind of warrior. You must be a dimensional warrior. You must understand that when you and I communicate in the spirit, that is cyberspace. Amen. That is spiritual cyberspace. God has had spiritual internet since the creation. We just don't, how many of you just hate it when your grandchildren come to the to the keyboard and go, oh, let me show you. <laughs> and you can't even follow what they did to get where you're supposed to go so that you can do it again. And it's so easy for them, right? Yes. I've seen these babies pick up an iPhone and I'm thinking, how on earth do you even know what that iPhone is? You're one year old. And they'll just navigate themselves to where they want, don't they? Did they have a tutorial program? Yeah. on how to do that in that kind of woo okay so what is holding us old people back us 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 
because we don't want to get uncomfortable. We don't want to have to go into a different system we don't know. We don't want to have to navigate someplace, do you hear what I'm saying, that is uncomfortable and we're not real sure what the rules are or the parameters are or anything else. But yet, that's what God's asking. So these are the places that war is fought every day. And this is the places we as the body of Christ have to take back. So God gave us the keys to America. We cannot do it individually because it's a corporate thing. So our prayer life has to be now almost two fronts. One is the pure evil that we can see, you know, to stop it, stop legislation, stop actions, stop covenants, stop covenant breaking, okay? Do you hear what I'm saying? Innocent bloodshed, idolatry, immorality. Can you see what I'm talking about? Those are the things that we have to come as a body of Christ and say no. It doesn't matter if you're elected king. No. But then we're also at the same time going to be fighting a front with our brothers and sisters. And how do you save them without killing them? How do you bring them to the place where they come and be part of the corporate so we can actually enforce in a greater way and greater way what God wants to do? A lot of people will talk about the Old Testament miracles, the Red Sea, the Baal, all these places. Remember in that season, they did not have the keys. In that season... They did not have uh, access to the authority that you and I have. We have a new covenant. Is everybody remembering your new covenant? Your new covenant means that God has now removed the barriers. At the, at the Garden of Eden, he removed them out of the garden so they couldn't live forever in their fallen state. That was basically his, what he was saying. He knew he had to keep them away for those dimensions. You remember at the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel, he put up a barrier between what they could imagine they could do. Are you listening? What they thought they could do. Do you know what kind of dimensions that is? That I could think something up and it would manifest? Are you hearing me? that I could create. God made me and you creators. We are creator's children. He made us to create. He made you to create this stuff. He made you to imagine what he sees so you could see it, so it could be created. Inventions is how you think of it, but in the <coughs> other dimensions, they're limitless. At the Tower of Babel, he knew that if he didn't put a barrier up between those spiritual unseen dimensions and the natural ones, that with this fallen state, anything they imagined they could do, they would be able to do it because they had access to the spiritual power in those dimensions. Are you getting that? So when he put that barrier up, but the difference between Lashon, their natural language, and Safa, their spiritual language, their ambassador language, he was saying, I can't give you the tools to have that dimensional access because you're in such a fallen state, you'll kill yourself and the rest of the planet. But when Jesus did his work on the cross, he cut a new covenant with us. And we cut a new covenant with this. He said, I'm buying you back from Satan so you no longer have to be under his authority. You no longer have to be his puppet. You no longer have to do what he says to do. Now I cut those strings and I give you access via the blood of Jesus to your original design, which is what they were in the Garden of Eden. 
And because I'm giving you original design, I'm now bringing you back into your place as having authority and dominion over what I originally gave you authority and dominion over. Right? So he's giving us authority back to the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, that's what he told them. This is all yours. You're supposed to take care of it. You're supposed to steward it. You're supposed to create in it. This is your thing. He's done that, but we're all still trapped in that natural place. And none of us will go up into those dimensional places where we can start thinking and creating and being like he says. He said his work was finished. That means all our job is is to deliver the verdict. But it's not going to be deliverable without resistance. If I'm kicking a squatter out that has been in my house for thousands of years, his descendants think they own the house. So it might take a little force for me to remove that squatter from the house. That's you and I. We're the sheriffs coming in. And if we come in and knock on the door and go, I need you to pretty please leave. The, the judge says, this is my house. So I'm ready to move in now. What do you think the response might be? <laughs> my granddaddy and my granddaddy's granddaddy lived here. And we have right to live here. You hear me? So until we know who we are, so that when I knock on the door, I am not doing the pretty please. <coughs> I am packing. It's, right. it's not a knock. It's not a knock. It's like kick the thing down and get out of my house. That's right. But we've got to love them. We've got to show Christian love. And be sweet and kind and nice to him. Are you hearing me? You sidle up to a demon. You give in and cozy up to a demon and put nice clothes on him. And tell me you're just expressing your inner self. You're still a demon. We have to change our thinking. And in these dimensions in the dimensions of air and space and cyberspace. Notice where the humans are in the middle of everything. Why are they in the middle of everything? Because we were supposed to be the ones in authority and dominion forever. So now he's giving us, we are right on the edge of him saying, okay, now do you see? You see what I'm saying? It's like he's removed more veil <laughs> Okay, it, it would have to have been like, can you imagine the priest in the inner court the day Jesus died? And the, suddenly the veil just ripped down and fell to the floor. Can you imagine what the priest was thinking? I'm dead. <laughs> who, first who tore it down? Okay, because that's not his God. Because God has separation. He knows his history is no one goes in there except for one time, right? But yet the invitation would have been, come in to me. The invitation would have been, I'm tearing the barrier down between the natural and the other spiritual unseen dimensions. I'm asking you to take your legal, spiritual, rightful, creator space. I'm asking you to come into the dimensions of God. I'm asking you to realize that if you walk in those dimensions, it's not so hard saying, God is my provider. When you walk in those dimensions, it's not hard to say, he's my healer. I, I walk in divine health. When you walk in those dimensions, you understand your full authority and power. And so when the enemy comes, 
you know what to do to stop him before he even enters your space. But we can't do it if we look at a situation like today and in just a few hours where the power will be switched in the natural. Now, the enemy is counting on us to go home and hide and let them do what they plan to do for years and years and years. Now, I'm pretty sure he's, God is not going to have us all join in a military situation <laughs> in the natural. But I can guarantee you he's giving you the call to do it in the spiritual. Because in the spiritual... Each of these domains, what happens is they, they almost seem like they have more authority once you start putting the domains together, okay? So if I just have domain or understanding in the land, I just have a certain understanding. I don't understand the warfare of air or water, and the enemy loves water. Mm -hmm. You will hear this many times, but... Um, we have, we have physical, natural enemies that are like China. China is a natural, physical enemy to our nation right now. Now, at the same time, it's one of the strongest underground churches there is. Okay. And they've already gone to those dimensions. In China, no one sends a tweet to tell you where the service is going to be. In China, no one sends an email, or they don't even whisper it to each other. In China, via the Spirit of Holy Spirit, they send out the spiritual internet and say, we will be meeting in such and such field at such and such time. If those people aren't tuned enough to that spiritual internet, they're not going to know where to go, and they're not going to know what time are you there? See, God is sending out those messages all the time. You're just picking up little pieces every once in a while to pray for. But we should all be so deep into the deep net of God that he can send us those messages. Like Selena and I laughed. I said, God, I need to show this picture today. Do I need to text Selena and say, you know, bring the thing to show your, your computer to show it. And he said, no, I'll tell her. Do you see the difference? And that's what she said. She thought she wasn't going to bring it today. It was all battery down. And God said, no, nah, you better bring your, <laughs> do you bring your power board. Do you hear what I'm saying? We do not walk in that place. The enemy does. And so until we are bold enough and brave enough, smart enough in God that we can say, I'm ready to be a dimensional warrior. I'm not going to settle for this level anymore. I'm not going to settle. So if that's the case, the government of God that is over America as we speak has the highest spiritual authority. That's you and I. So when you pray in the Spirit, you are lending all of your authority, all of your understanding, all of your victories, all of your creative imaginations. You are lending all of your ability to gather intel in the Spirit and to put it in and to decree into the Spirit realm, Father God, do this. Because He's not going to step in and do anything in America that we don't ask him to do. Somewhere in your mind, you got to get that. He will not violate his own laws. He will not violate his own laws. And his laws are, he gave us authority. So if he comes in and just supernaturally, without us praying or asking or decreeing in any way, he will violate his laws. Is God a lawbreaker? Because he knows if he breaks that law, then everything crumbles. 
So even when we are wallowing in our own mess and begging him to do something, he is not going to violate that until we get our acts together and act and speak and do the authority he's given us to do. See how different that is. So it really is the point. I know many of you know who Reese Howes is. He was an intercessor in World War II. He literally changed the war with his intercessors. You can read his book. It's unbelievable what all he accomplished by just, he was never on the battlefield in the natural, but in the spiritual, he was. And the Holy Spirit would give them intel on how to pray. <clears throat> we are way past that. Mm -hmm. And we got to get to that place. So <clears throat> when God's trying to uh, get through to you, you've got to be the person that's ready to rip some of these walls down. Are you willing to fly in cyberspace as he tells you to do? Without an airplane in space? Huh? Are you willing to go to the places that he sends us for the water? Right now, almost all of our ports are compromised by China. Did you know that? Ports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary. Pretty scary stuff. But yet... It's very much like, I've shared this analogy many times, the snail and the glowworm, okay? The snail, there's no way a glowworm can hurt a snail as long as the snail comes and rests all of his, the foot of himself on a solid bottom, okay? <clears throat> but the glowworms, their favorite delicacy is snails, okay? And so they wait for the lazy snails and the snail that has almost all of his foot covered, except for just a little bit, okay? And what those snails do is they get lazy and they just, you know, they're almost there, okay? You know, they're, they're mostly solid. And the glowworm will come and he'll take his little antenna and he'll start tapping it on that little exposed flesh of the snail. And what he's doing is anesthetizing it. Just tap, 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 tap. So all that little flesh gets put to sleep. And then he sticks his little antenna in a little bit farther. It puts more anesthesia. And before long, he's sent enough anesthesia that now the snail is paralyzed and can't move. And so the glowworm then eats him up. Lovely. We have these three places that God is pushing intercession in the military of God. One of these spec ops groups, I've said this to you a million times, but now put it in relationship to where we are today. The spec ops groups are in place. Many of them have already been doing tons of warfare. You've seen it this last few months even greater. They're finally waking up to, you know, getting their jobs done, and they've been doing it. But we can't win this war with just these special op teams. The second group are the Marines. The Marines are supposed to go in, storm the beach, and kick out the enemy. We have not seen that. You see that? It, that's not happened. What they just finally did is got woke up to where the enemy is. And so now they are waking up to say, wait a minute, what are we going to do about this? Because the bottom line is, it's not enough for us to take spiritual authority. It needs to fall down into the natural so that who is our president comes in line with the government of God. Right now it's not there. But as the Marines come in and storm the beach, taking out the enemy with lots of firepower, then we secure the beach. We secure the land. We secure that kingdom. But then they will go on to the next one and the next one and the next one. But what has to come in behind those Marines is your occupiers. The ones who keep it, maintain it, uh, keep the enemy out. They set up an altar to God and they have 24-7 worship, 24-7 prayer. 
They secured the boundaries and they never ever stopped. They never let the enemy come back in. In America, we've taken different pieces and every time we do, they let him come back in because we don't have the occupiers woke up. Who are the occupiers? Most of them are going to be your evangelicals, those who do believe Jesus is the Son of God, those who do understand that his covenant is true and it's a very powerful thing, but they have not yet let Holy Spirit come in and direct them. You see that? They've kept Holy Spirit away, and that's been the enemy's greatest tool. As long as he keeps Holy Spirit away from them, then he can manipulate what they are doing in a very small area. Just get people saved. Don't worry about kingdom. Don't worry about dominion. Don't worry about authority. Just get people saved. Our job is whatever stopping them from getting Holy Spirit. That's our war. See? Our war is Holy Spirit can rescue every last one of our brothers and sisters. But he's got to be able to get to them. And right now, the walls they've put up are walls of religion that are so holy in their minds that they almost see anything spiritual as being evil. I can't tell you how many times I was told, you are too emotional with that whole Holy Spirit thing. Do you hear me? You are too emotional with that Holy Spirit thing. You know, that we don't need that anymore because we have the Bible now. And we don't need that. That's our second war. So it's really like we're going to have to trust each other enough that we can be back to back. You're fighting this one. I'm fighting this one. And we got each other's back. Okay. That's where we're going to have to be. We can't be divided. We can't be deceived. We can't be loveless. Because if I'm not loving these evil people that are being manipulated, if I can't love them enough to try and rescue them, to definitely stop them, but try and rescue them, then I don't need to be on that battlefield because I'll be taken out. But if I can't love my fellow brothers and sisters enough to say, you're almost there. <laughs> you almost got it. Just, get, just give you a little bit more and you're going to be great. You can't be taken out. But they'll fight us. They'll both fight us. And so this is a season where God is saying, today is a really great day. This is the day you get to jump, not over the edge of the cliff, which is what everybody's thinking, right? Mm -hmm. We're going over the cliff. <laughs> We're going down into the deep, dark dips. No, we just jumped into cyberspace. We just jumped into a different dimension. And we are no longer bound by what religion or the enemy wants to keep us bound. The enemy had planned this day for a long, long time. And they were so furious when it got interrupted four years ago. Because they had it all planned out. Now, we can blame parties, we can blame peoples, we can blame cultures, we can blame anything, but the bottom line is, let's go for who's really the problem. Mm -hmm. And really the problem is Satan himself mm -hmm. and all his dominions. Mm -hmm. So our first thing today is you cannot get rid of something in your brothers and sisters or attacking the evil that's still in you. If it's in you, the enemy knows it, and the minute you try and get it rid of it, he's going to tap it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make clear? So today you get a choice. Today you get to choose who's still king. Jesus is the only king. And that's where we are. Let me... <clears throat> read you this little piece. Um, no, this is... Um, is that what you're hearing? Yeah, that's what I got this morning. What you got this morning? Okay, you want to read it? What did you hear? Okay. 
Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand up. O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> I think I like that. Okay, on the platform this morning with our president as he was leaving were 17 flags. 17 in scripture means total victory over the enemy. We have put our whole hope and trust in the Lord. His ways are not our ways. <laughs> and um, this is the number. 17 symbolizes overcoming the enemy and complete victory. God overcame the sins of rebellious humans when he began to flood the earth through rain on the 17th of the second Hebrew month. Noah's ark and its six passengers rested on the mounts, mountains of Ararat on the 17th of the seventh month, right in the middle of God's annual holy period for the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus gained a complete victory over death and the grave when he resurrected near sunset on Nisan 17. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 17th mention of the word love comes when the Apostle Paul states that it is the greatest gift of all. God's unending love, John 3, 16, is truly victorious over all things. So those who stay faithful to God to the end of their lives will gain the victory over the grave when they are miraculously brought back to life. Isn't that an interesting thing? Okay. All right. So, we are here. Yay, God. You see these? How many do you operate in? Not in the natural. In the natural, I know you go and mow your grass and do that stuff. How many of you spiritually clean it? Okay. How many of you look at your water and just drink it or wash in it? But how many of you spiritually clean it? Water can be contaminated just like everything else. Mm -hmm. You should put the filters of God on your house just like you put filters on your water. So no water comes to you. You don't drink it, wash in it, brush your teeth in it, anything. Do you hear me? Because it's got the contaminants. It's got the sin of things going through. It may sound silly, but again... There are spiritual cesspools all around you, and you're not recognizing them. How about air? We all know that. We've all seen and felt the air. How many of you get allergies? What do you think those are? Okay, they're just little spiritual frequencies and, and missiles that the enemy sends to your body that has a weakness, and it responds. <clears throat> Ought not to be. How about space? Okay. I mean, many people will talk to you about first, second, and third heavens. I believe they all occupy the same space or want to. But there is a geographical situation where we know the enemy has a lot of stuff in space. Okay. Trying to block, just like Daniel, block the angel's words of the Lord coming to you. And the last is cyberspace. Notice it goes through all of them. Because that's your Safa. That was what God blocked at the Tower of Babel. He's given it back to you on the cross. When he ripped that barrier between Holy of Holies, he gave it back to you, saying, you have access to all of this, people. All of this. Why are you not using it? And then doing us as humans is the big piece. We're supposed to be in all of it. Are you in all of it in the natural or in the spiritual? Okay? Yeah. I don't know if this is just me. <laughs> um, I was wondering corporately if we could just come out of agreement with that spirit of hopelessness and defeat mm -hmm. from this feeling like, okay, we, you know, this war's over. Get rid of that, and then you impart to us that kingdom. Okay. You want to pray? Okay. Because you're the one got it. Okay. This is so how Father this God, works. we just come to you corporately and we ask for forgiveness for agreeing yes. with the enemy and giving him our <coughs> authority 
in saying that this war has been lost, that we were hopeless, we're defeated, um, we come out of agreement with hope deferred, Father. So we just ask for forgiveness, and we ask that you cleanse us head to toe, inside and out, every realm, every dimension, from this lie that the enemy has told us that it's over, that it's going to be four more years of the enemy's plans and plots and schemes that get to come to fruition. So, Father, we say in the name of Jesus, we give you permission yes. to cleanse us right now. And we say hopelessness, so hope deferred, defeat, and um, complacency. We say get out in the name of Jesus. We say you will leave us now. You will leave this house and anyone who comes in the doors of this facility. We say get out, get out, get out. Without manifestation, you will go straight to the feet of Jesus right now. Everybody take a nice deep breath. Blow it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, where that was, we ask that you fill us up with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We ask that you fill us up with Holy Spirit in a brand new way, that we have access to every single dimension. Father, that you make us cyberspace warriors. Father, that you give us your armor. Lord, that it just infiltrates every cell in our bodies. It's not something we put on. It's something that we are. And Father, I ask that our voices be loosed and that we decree and declare your truth and your government in our homes, in our workplaces, in everywhere that we go. Father, I decree and declare yes. that our feet, everywhere that our feet touch, Father, that you go everywhere we go, Father, and that frequencies change. Everywhere we go, the frequency of God, the frequency of love, the frequency of justice, because mm -hmm. you are a just God, mm -hmm. Father, that that goes with us everywhere we go. And Father, mm -hmm. under Yolanda's anointing mm -hmm. and her authority that she carries, Father, that we are covered. And Father, we get to pull on her victories. Everywhere we go, Father, we just pull on her victories. And we ask, Father, that you would empower her with even more even more, even more, that she goes to every dimension, Father, that you have called her to. We add our agreement to that, and we ask, Father, that it would be imparted to us every time we need it. Yes. Amen. So, Father God, I see the image of us standing. It's like the enemy has come with hordes of demons, and has slowly pushed the person to the very edge of the cliff, Father. And everything in the natural looks like the enemy is going to overtake that warrior and push him off the edge. That's the picture that they are all seeing right now. But Father, I ask that you open their spiritual eyes and let them see the laughter and the joy on the warrior. Because the warrior realizes those are natural things running towards them. And the warrior has just been given orders from the Most High King. He's just been given warrior orders that say, get ready to jump. Yep. Get ready to go into the areas and dimensions that I am sending you. So Father, as that warrior stands there and they're all laughing, thinking they've, they've got him, this is it, it's over. Let the warrior's arms arise and let him jump as far into the space as he can. And let them see that he's now literally come to that place of transfiguring, just like Jesus did, into the dimensions that he was originally decided and designed to be. So, Father, as he takes his place in the swirling atmosphere, as he now realizes, I am battling from a different place. I am seated with the Most High King. I look down on the enemy's plans mm. and I can see and use all the weapons of my warfare in a totally different dimension, Father. Mm. So, Father, we come and we each raise our sword and we each say, here am I, Lord. Here am I. If you need a scepter, we will be the scepter. We will hold your scepter in our arms. If we need to be a sword, we'll hold the sword but we are your soldiers, we are your warriors, and we will be willing 
and able to accept this assignment mm -hmm. of going into the dimensions where you want us to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.